Hi everybody, this is Scott Morrison, CTO and Chief Architect of Layer 7 Technologies. Today what we're going to look at is an actual integration between the Secure Span technology, our gateways, and vCloud Director from VMware. So what we're going to do are, is actually examine two very specific scenarios. The first one, we'll be looking at the integration in terms of adding extra security to vCloud. So in other words, augmenting the existing API with things like higher levels of security with a more sophisticated security token or SSL where we have a highly constrained set of um, cipher suites. The second scenario we'll look at is a little different. We'll actually look at what we can do with the building blocks that we've got to actually start to promote elasticity and do automatic elasticity in the cloud. So in other words, begin to deliver on that true promise of elasticity in the cloud. So scenario one, first of all, what we're going to look at is, a, is um, basically a layout that looks kind of like what you see on the screen right here. We've got a vCloud instance, and in front of that, a virtualized cloud control gateway. Now, inside this cloud control gateway, we've actually got a number of elements that we've actually put in specifically to integrate with the vCloud API. So it makes it much easier to actually drag and drop vCloud elements, like starting an image or power on, power off, and be able to put those into a regular policy that um, cloud control may actually make use of. So, Enough looking at slideware. Let's actually try it out for real. What I'm going to do is open up um, basically my Layer 7 Policy Manager. So what you see here is this big blank area where we're going to build our policy. And over here we've got a number of policy assertions. These are the small elements that we actually make use of to build a, either a security policy, a monitoring policy, or even an orchestration policy between different elements. So remember, what we're going to do here is focus very specifically on augmenting the existing vCloud API to provide basically greater levels of security and visibility into it. So let's start first of all by, by actually having a quick look down here at our vCloud connection info. So as you can see, this is something that we've made available in the um, policy manager itself. And this policy manager is talking to a virtualized gateway. So again, this is not a hardware gateway sitting uh, in a data center somewhere. This is actually a virtualized gateway that operates itself within the vCloud and uh, vSphere infrastructure. So first of all, I've got a couple of different connections to vCloud. I've got one that I've set up here already, uh, where basically a number of elements have been defined, the connection name, um, the user organization, the URL, the version ID, actually, because of course we're up to 1.5 now, um, and uh, finally the password to get in. So enough of that. This is basically a shared resource that I'm going to make use of in my policy. So what I'll do now is um, actually go down here into uh, service availability, and these are all the assertions that we can start to make use of within our policy. And as you can see, there's two very specific ones around vCloud right now. vCloud uh, start a vApp and stop a vApp. And these are the two I'm going to focus on for now. So let me drag and drop this one right in, vCloud start vApp. And I'll choose a connection um, right here. And then what I'm going to do is basically mine my existing HTTP parameters that are coming in to actually parameterize the virtual data center name and the vApp name. Now these values, of course, within the policy language are available as context variables. And they happen to be called the naming is kind of like this, HTTP, dot, uh, oops, sorry, almost did it backwards, request.http, dot, uh, parameter, uh, dot, in this case, uh, I'll call it vapp. So this would be a query parameter coming in there, and or a post parameter, and I can show you maybe later if we have time uh, how to actually distinguish between posts and gets. But basically now what I've done is I've taken the dynamic value of that that I'm getting in this policy, and I'm going to insert that into my call to uh, vCloud. Now the vapp na name, um, what I'll do is, is a quick little shortcut right here um, to save myself the typing. Um, I'll call this one vapp right here. So basically what I've got is, is a simple proxy at this point. So a request coming into uh, the policy manager or the uh, uh, cloud uh, control gateway will actually be identified as going into this you know, particular start vapp um, policy. Um, and then what it'll do is it'll start to execute this policy which just right now consists of a single element, which is, is uh, an assertion that tries to start a vapp. 
what it'll do then is it'll actually mine the two parameters out of that um, HTTP query. So it'll mine both the VApp and the virtual data center name and send those down to um, using the vCloud API to the actual vCloud infrastructure, the vCD infrastructure. So not too interesting right now because all I've done really is created an intermediary, a proxy. So not a lot of value. So let's let's think about this a little more and, and look at the problem of actually augmenting this with a little more security. The first thing we probably want to do is actually, well, authenticate the request coming in. So through in the access control part of the palette right here, I've got pretty much any different kind of authentication security token you can imagine. Let's look at the simplest one. What I'll do is I'll just drag and drop in a requirement for HTTP, HTTP basic credentials. What's going to happen now is the system will go in, it'll look for those credentials, and then it'll try to find what to do with them. So what I want to do with them is actually authorize against a particular group. So in other words, if you're in, if you have membership in a particular group and you happen to have the right credentials with you, you can actually get access to this, you know, version of the v uh, Cloud API. So let me drop, drag and drop this in. And what this has opened up is a search um, uh, identity provider window, which actually allows me to search a number of different potential identity providers. I've got a corporate LDAP hooked up to this particular gateway, but I've also got one called the internal identity provider, which you can really think of as kind of like an onboard directory. We use it a lot for testing in that, but you can use it for production as well. Now, I don't have a lot of, uh, of identities in this particular one. Um, I've got Scott. Um, I've got somebody named Spock. Uh, but I've also got a group here called Developers, and that's the one I'm going to select right now. So right now, I've got a pretty simple policy. Um, I've taken my simple reverse proxy um, that I put in here and basically turned it into an authenticating reverse proxy on the Start V app API. So very, very simple. You can conceptualize what's going on um, you know, simply by looking at this and you understand it pretty fast. So the next thing we may want to do is protect that channel because of course HTTP basic doesn't actually do a lot to protect your, um, um, your password or anything like that. So let's drop in a requirement for SSL and we'll put that right up at the top. And what I'm going to do is open that up um, just to give you an idea of what I can configure here. Uh, I can force SSL to be required or even forbidden. Um, but here's something interesting. I can actually require client auth um, certificate authentication. So I can completely change by just checking that off my authentication mechanism. So now I'm in the odd situation of having two different uh, credentials. So let's get rid of one of them. And now what I've got is SSL with client-side certificate authentication, so a stronger level of authentication than BASIC. Um, but again, still authenticating against somebody in the developer's group. So you can see the complexity of PKI and managing certificates and that has been totally eliminated here. We just drag and drop this in and it all just works. So all of a sudden, you've got what can potentially be a multi-factor authentication if your certificates and key, um, uh, key stores are actually on, let's say, a key card or something like that. Add it on to vCloud, this simple. Save and activate, boom, it's running, it's now available on the internet, which is kind of cool. So let's do something a little more sophisticated now. Let's, let's think about rate limiting. That's something that comes up again and again and again for different people. Um, we may not want our vCloud API to get hit more than, let's say, 100 transactions a second. So let me go in here and try dropping a rate limit in here. And I'll put it just in front of my start v, uh, v app. Um, and I'll put a limit of 100 requests a second. And rather than, if I get 101 or anything above 100, rather than failing, what I'm going to do is delay. And I will hold open up to maybe 30 sockets um, uh, or 30 in-flight transactions. So basically what I'll do is I'll stop those extra ones in their tracks but I'll buffer them. I'll hold on to the next window. And if the next window, for instance, actually has room in it, less than 100 transactions, I'll start to trickle them out. Now, obviously, this gets up to a certain threshold, and then it really does start, start uh, dropping um, those connections. And, uh, and, and that's basically defined by that 30 that I put in there. What this is doing, then, is it's not just doing rate limiting. It's actually traffic shaping. So it's smoothing out those, those traffic spikes and things like that that can actually do a lot of damage into some kind of cloud infrastructure. And of course, I actually have to move that up one. There we go. Uh, so it actually comes before our start v app. So last but not least, let's let's quickly wrap this up with some simple auditing because of course we probably want to tell the world what we've done. So at the very bottom here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, hey, 
you know, we started a V app called, and once again, I will put in my parameter V app right there. Simple as that. And I'm going to actually send this to the standard audit log. Uh, I could, of course, sync this to anything from syslog to any kind of external um, audit sync that I wanted to. But we'll just make it real simple here. Let's save and activate, and boom, we're done. Basically, what we've done is augmented the existing vCloud API with security. So we've got both SSL with client-side authentication in there. I've got authorization against... Um, basically anybody who's in the developers group. I've got a rate limit with traffic shaping on it, and I've got a direct new call into the uh, Start V app, um, uh, you know, uh, part of the vCloud API. So it's as simple as these five little assertions here. And the beauty of it is, of course, is these can be mixed and matched and moved. We can have flow control. We can branch. We can basically bring, you know, all the sophistication of a real programming language, but in a very visual paradigm like this, to actually solve real problems. And that's where a lot of the value is. And if you stop and think about what we've done here, you can begin to look at some slightly more sophisticated um, uh, styles of interaction. So consider this one. And, you know, because of time constraints, I'm not actually going to go into this in detail. So I'll leave this one as an exercise to the reader. But basically what we could do with, with these exact same building blocks is sit in front of an API that maybe is coming from an application running in the vCloud. Uh, so for instance, an HR application or a database application. And because the gateway, the cloud control gateway, sees all the traffic going in there, once it hits a certain threshold, um, let's say 200 transactions a second or a thousand transactions a second, whatever the capacity is of that backend system. What it can do is sense that and use that event um, not to start dropping connections, but to actually use these vCloud API elements that I've just shown you to actually start to orchestrate a brand new instance of your HR application or your database application. So in other words, drive your elasticity in the cloud from the devices like this, the layer 7 um, gateways, that actually really know what's going on. They're in a very privileged position being right there in the middle. They can actually see everything flying around there. So that's the key thing that we want to do with our policies and with these new vCloud elements, is actually drive true orchestrations to make elasticity and dynamic elasticity a reality in vCloud. So thanks a lot for your time. I'm Scott Morrison, CTO of Layer 7. If you have any uh, more interest in this, please come and contact us at www.layer7.com or take a look at my blog, which is at kscottmorrison.com. Thanks for your time.